Welcome back to Melbourne Underground, I'm Imogen. And I'm Colby. This week we're discussing the importance of the vinyl resurgence with Max Labrasse from Alley Tunes Records and taking a look at the past and future of the iconic Festival Hall. And later we have an interview with up and coming artist Leah Nanos and a solo performance by Matt Stanios. Let's get right into it. Topping the underground charts, we have Arctic Monkeys with their new released album Tranquility, Base, Hotel and Casino. And closer to home, we have Missy Higgins at number two with their album Solastalgia. And Melbourne cop du pop duo Client Liaison have just announced their headlining a festival hosted by Triple J dubbed Expo Liaison, promising seven hours of entertainment, a multifaceted fun-filled extravaganza. Tickets are available from the Client Liaison website and they'll be selling out fast. So if you want your dose of pop with a satirical edge, head on over. All of the mentioned albums are available to purchase at any local music store. Which brings us to Alley Tunes, the Glen Ferry local. We had Dylan go down to Glen Ferry Station this week to take a look and see what it's all about. Hey guys, here we are at Glen Ferry Station, Alley Tunes, an independent music store which showcases not only world music, but music on a local scale as well. Let's go take a look. Alley Tunes is owned by Max Labras, who has been kind enough to give us a bit of an insight into his local business. It's been 11 years we've been doing it, and for a while people uh, we are really excited about digital format, yeah. being like, oh, it's lighter, it's cheaper, it doesn't take any room. For record stores, it was really, really hard to survive. The digital has been around for a long time now, and people realize that like, that's not what they like. Yeah. People like holding something in their hand. Yeah. Yeah. So now people can try a lot of music for free, yeah. but what they really like, they like to buy it. They like to have it, and they like to collect it. What do you think of the Melbourne music scene at the moment? At this moment, the Melbourne music scene is very exciting. There's a lot of uh, young artists that produce a lot of things and um, release on vinyl. There is a few big uh, underground labels in Melbourne that does really well overseas as well. So now it's a really exciting time to be in Melbourne for music. Thanks for being here today. Thank, Thank you very much. much. That was Alla Tunes. Back to you guys. Thanks, Dylan. And if you want to check out the entire interview, head over to our Facebook page by following the link. It's kind of amazing the comeback of records that's kind of surfaced the last couple of years. I mean, it's kind of like what's old is new again. Yeah, even new music these days has been turned into vinyls. Yeah, and it's not just Alley Tunes either that's kind of gained popularity. There's a lot of like small record stores in Melbourne that's kind of become like tourist hotspots. I mean, I personally, I like uh, Station to Station in Spencer Street, and you're a fan of uh, Heartland Records in North Melbourne? Yes, I've started quite a collection, but enough about vinyls. We have our special guest here. Ah, yes, true. Next up, we have budding musician Leah Nanos in the studio. My name is Leah Nanos. I'm 16 and I'm a singer-songwriter. I've been playing music for six years and I love every moment of it. My style and genre is blues and soul, but I also love pop and R&B. People are supportive of my music, but some people do think that it's more of a hobby and not really a career. I would love to show to everyone that they're wrong and I am going to succeed in music. Yeah, welcome, Liz. Uh, Nanos in the studio. Hi. Hi, how are you guys going? Thank you for coming. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. Hello. How are you? Succeed. Thank you. How are you going, Leah? I'm good, yourself? Oh, awesome. Yes, I'm good, thank you. That's now, great. over 30,000 views on YouTube, such an incredible artist. Thank uh, you. What made you start out professionally? Um, I started to become a professional artist when I decided that's what I want to do in my life and to be a musician and a singer. So I was 14 when I decided this and ever since it's been history so yeah. Oh, nice. awesome. Yeah, cool. Thank you. And now I understand you have performed for renowned artists such as Adam Lambert, Guy Sebastian, Iggy Azalea and yeah. even Olivia Newton-Johns just to name a few. Yeah. What was that like? Incredible. They're all people that I inspire to as musicians and as people um, and they're just, they were so incredibly sweet yeah. and the advice that I got from them I learned so much especially at X Factor when I was 14 and just Olivia Newton John, she was filming me and I was like, oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> like it was crazy. Like yeah. Yeah. my singing's on her phone. So it's pretty amazing. Yeah. Oh wow. That's yeah. insane. Um, could Thank you actually you. tell us a little bit about what it's like being a musician in Melbourne? Um, it can be quite difficult, I'm not gonna lie. Um, just to get out there because Melbourne isn't really an international audience. So it's 
quite hard to get exposure, but I love like Melbourne and Australia and they're really supportive. So. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Where do you see yourself in five years with this whole journey? Well, I'm hoping America, like, you know, recording my album with producers over there and getting my songs in the top charts would be a dream come true and just becoming an international artist and on the way to my dream. Yeah. So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, definitely. Well, um, where can people find you online? Um, you can find me at Leah Nanos. Um, my social media, it's all of that. So, yeah. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you for yeah. having me. Thank you so much for coming on yeah. the show. Thank you. Can't wait to see where your career takes you and everything. Thank you so much. Yeah, Really awesome. appreciate it. <laughs> um, well, during the week, we also had a chance to visit the iconic festival hall after we heard word that it's been replaced for apartment buildings. Let's head over there to where Satir's reporting. Built in May of 1915, Festival Hall is one of Melbourne's iconic venues. But now it has been sold off to build an apartment complex of $65 million. Various artists such as The Beatles, Frank Sinatra and Johnny Cash has performed in this institute. And that's why many locals are upset about shutting this down. The owners of the venue are set to sell this place as they cannot compete with large arenas and local detractors are criticizing for its awkward location. The closing of the festival hall is a massive hit to the Melbourne music scene. I'm Satire from Melbourne Underground signing off. Back to you guys at the studio. Wow, like what an integral part of Melbourne's history. It's just getting knocked down to make apartment buildings. Yeah, you can really understand why people are quite cross about it. Like Satir said, uh, even the Beatles played there and other renowned artists and yeah. bands. Awesome. Yeah, really huge for that music industry. Mm, yeah. Definitely. Well, um, actually, that's nearly about all the time we have for today. Uh, thank you, everyone, for watching the show. I uh, would like to thank Leah for uh, coming and telling us about uh, her musical journey. And thank you to Ali Tunes for giving us an insight into the comeback of records. Make sure you check out our social media where you can watch the full interview from Ali Tunes. And if you miss an episode of the show, you can check it out there. Uh, now to finish off, we have Mark Stanios from Welcome to Stanios performing Remember. And we'll see you next week in the underground. Took a hard look, a hard look at what was me. But no matter what I told you, things just always stay the same. And this weakness is getting heavier, you know it's shattering. And by the end, I'm struggling to remind myself to.
Take me.